Just got back from the ball field. Our league starts in a couple of weeks, so every year we meet on a Saturday, all the teams, and we get the fields ready, fences, etc. So I forgot to take some footage of there, but here's a street in Vancouver that's a bicycle street. The trees are going to start to get green, and then they cover that whole street, which is kind of cool. Those are going to be cherries, all coming in bloom in a couple of weeks, I would say. And as I look east, same sort of thing. It will be a street covered with uh, beautiful foliage. What is this pretty tree that's in blossom? Vancouver homes. And here's a small magnolia. Just ready to pop its bloom. They're so pretty. Is everywhere you look. A woman walked by my um, studio last night. She moved here from South Africa. And she just told me that the spring here in Vancouver is just like a storybook. I agree. Chacha has changed uh, beds since yesterday. If you're wondering what this was, I had built this crate when she was a puppy and we were training her, but Lemieux, my wife, trained her to use the bathroom on that little crate um, inside, which is really convenient when we have to leave her uh, for any amount of time. And if it's raining and cold and stuff, then she can always just know when to go to the bathroom. A little bit uh, rain falling. A little chilly. Just got back from uh, the ball field, helping set that up. And actually, I just went and walked Chacha at Trout Lake, and there was a farmer's market today. I ran into a few friends and said hello. And uh, now I gotta get at it in the studio. Hopefully, we can make some headway today. I actually was in here this morning and just gave it a quick sweep and a little clean out. Might not look like it to your eyes, but to my eyes, I know the difference. And I think I'll start my day with um, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid soundtrack. It's a soundtrack that Bob Dylan did, and it's a little a lot of instrumentals on it, but I find it pretty cool and relaxing. <laughs>
how's that look? Yeah. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is putting a, a base down here connected to the bottom of the glove, stretches out, and then onto that base I will be using this piece right here and the ball is going to rest inside of it, but I'm going to shape, um, that's what I had planned out, but I'm going to shape this piece to look like a bat, and I'll have the handle coming up with a little twist on it, and it'll just be, you know, and, I, and if any of you are sitting there watching or thinking, well, how can something like that be a bat? Well, this is the, um, cowlick comb studio where we uh, are just comb cowlicks not try to straighten them <laughs> but just to get this piece i had it uh last night i was crawling around you should have saw what it took just to saw this chunk off i had it off of it was the end of a big log and um over here in that area i have a bunch of uh of pieces all stacked up but that that piece that I just cut off last night was obviously at the bottom and uh, it, it took you know I just didn't want to drag anything out so I was like sawing it and it was just in the most awkward position but um, I got it and I'm gonna be working on that today shaving it down getting that fit in uh, trying to find a base and those are my pieces and then I'll kind of hold on to uh, other details as we get to them so maybe a little bit of sanding and shaping and starting to um, to get things in a in a place where I can start to do those details and uh, hopefully I can um, uh, get at some things uninterrupted for most of it and uh, get a lot done I just put a little thing on my um, attached to the wall there where I just set the camera on. What kind of angle? Yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe I go a little bit lower, eh? Little angle down there? Okay. Yeah. on my uh, website um, there's a section in there with the Comers uh, fast pitch softball team from a few years ago I think we did it for four years I designed the uniforms and stuff but there's a bat within the logo or yeah there's a bat in the logo and then on the on the front of the jerseys and it has a twist in it so I don't know I always kept that as part of my um, thing Oh, I gotta get some glasses on. Last thing I need is a. Uh... Oh, that's my ears. Something getting in my head. Yeah, so I'm just gonna start playing around here, getting this into shape. The tricky area is gonna be in there. I want the ball to rest on it. And, uh,. I think today I'll explain to you part of my uh, plan with the ball. I was just at the Trout Lake, the park that I was at the other day with the dog. Um, they have a great farmer's market there, and I didn't know it started today. Today was the first uh, day. It's every Saturday, obviously from April, and I think it goes into October or November. But it's a great 
it's a great um, market. friends there that are vendors Stephanie and Luke Stephanie does uh, forage mushrooms wild mushrooms <laughs> Stephanie's kind of my first friend when I moved to Vancouver like 15 years ago she uh, lived in the apartment upstairs from where I was at. And she's just like this magnet of people. She just is always herself, very kind, and everybody likes her. She has so many good friends around her. And uh, I consider her... Just a very, very good, trusted friend. And it's always a pleasure to see her. My wife actually, Lemieux actually, uh, does some of, uh, uh, helps Stephanie out in the summertime. So, running her one of her stations when she's got two markets going on. Hi. Hi how Pretty good. How you doing? I haven't been able to hit in recent years on my ball team. I just do a little pitch and my knee is really bad. Um, but when I was hitting, I um, I prefer a fatter handle on my uh, on my bat. camera was shaking there so I just kind of moved it up yeah I prefer a fatter handle and then on our team I have to have my own I, I get like I had three at bats last year and um, I just can't run anymore after my knee surgery it's kind of disappointing handle and a bigger kind of a knob yeah I was mentioning the book uh, shop class as soul craft yesterday from uh, Crawford Matthew Crawford or Michael Crawford I think it's Matthew and I've read another book of his as well but you know and I was mentioning that it was recommended by um, Heather Hying Brett Weinstein and then the book that I'm reading now, that one that I'm just actually going to have to return today, uh, why, why we get sick, like that evolutionary um, take on uh, getting sick. That's also recommended by them. And again, I'll mention that I have uh, read several, like many books actually, 
by their recommendations or through them, through their podcast. That's kind of the thing that has kept me um, informed over the past three years. You know, ever since uh, COVID hit, then there was the George Floyd uh, um, incident. And, uh, you know, there's lots of things that are going on in our society that uh, are kind of polarizing people. And, um, you know, it's kind of sad to me that um, people like Brett Weinstein and Heather Hying have been uh, absolutely slandered and lambasted by, by people and uh, they've been called every name in the book and it, it's just um, the opposite of what they ha- are actually about. And um, any parents out there, any young person that just perhaps listens to this, you know, th- and this is just my opinion, of course, right? But if you are, if you have children that are about to go into um, university or onto college or anything like that, Brett and Heather have put so much time actually just thinking about that. Like they, they, um, they taught students, first year students for 14 or 15 years as a team, basically out of the school until the big incident happened where, um, the woke, like, you know, the kind of, a, a mob of students attacked Brett at the school for writing an email that if one were to go back and look at the situation and were to objectively read that email, Brett was actually standing up against segregation. That's what it was. And the way things get twisted and turned and and seemingly more and more so as we move forward with the speed of everything, social media, nobody's taking time to look at um, things or to discuss things properly. Um, you know, the, they were ousted from, he was ousted from his position and it's really disturbing to watch it and it's on video, it's there to see. So it's not like I'm making this up. And, uh, anyhow, the point being, not one of their students, Brett's or Heather's students, turned their back on Brett and Heather. Um, it was, it was students that had never met him. So... Hello. And um, so if you're trying to prepare a, your, your child to go into university and stuff, I'm not kidding. Like, I wish that I would have had professors like them. And I only discovered, you know, I, I've been waiting for um, thinkers and, and professors like that my entire life. And it just came to me in my 40s. Like, I, I've really learned so much. Like, the way that they... Uh, think about education and the way that they want to have students critically thinking about things, the respect that they have for listening to different opinions and uh, standing up for what they, you know, what they feel is right. Like, you know, these, these people are very, um, very fair and well thought out people. And, um, their thinking, in my opinion, is robust. They wrote a book called The uh, Hunter-Gatherer's Guide to the 21st Century, and I'm telling you right now, like, from my perspective, it is a very solid and robust um, book. And uh, I would love for them to kind of work, write another book based on basically education, that, like, how they feel about how education should be modeled. Because I think that would be very valuable in society. And, you know, they will get lambasted. You know, people went on and changed their uh, Wikipedia site, and Brett was slandered on that, and, you know, calling them anti-vaxxers because of their stance on the um, so-called vaccinations that were just mandated upon so many of us. And, um, you know, Brett and Heather are not anti-vaxxers. They have many vaccinations that they mentioned they have, as they took a lot of their students into the Amazon over the course of their studies so it's just a 
it. It's just from my perspective. You know, they're the ones that you want to be listening to when it comes to trying to um, prepare a young student after high school or whatever. the bat like that I'm just kind of getting a basic idea here I'll nip it off right there and then flatten the bottom bottom will be on the base this area will be smoothed out ball will rest on that this sticks up a little bit and um, I think that'll kind of be a cool uh, trophy so any of um you parents or uh, young people that in the future might be interested in you know uh, hanging out with me through kind of a mentoring kind of service I'm just trying to um, explain a little bit where I come from philosophically I don't do the ideology I don't um, I don't do that ideology and uh, I, I try to look at people from all walks of life in a um, in an equal uh, kind of manner, the way that I was taught to, and um, you know, I, I I'm reading a lot of books on the topic of uh, you know, if you want to call it woke or wokeism, and I'm hearing that that's now a slur and a slanderish word, or critical race theory or critical social justice, I just these, this is the first time I've been hearing these terms in the past few years. So I was like confused with what was going on and I, I found that there was a, um, a lot of people virtue signaling other people, uh, you know, in a way that I really didn't agree with. And um, I, I, I thought things were very questionable. So if you're wondering about, you know, coming through me, these are kind of the, this is the way I, I go about things like there's no ideology for me it's looking at the content of somebody's character uh, you know I, I'm not interested in identity politics or any of that thing um, the, the the playing victimhood it's about trying to raise people up so you know the books that I try to read I read a lot on uh, us versus them thinking all about um, you know uh, critical thinking you know the importance of freedom of speech the the actual good things that we do have in our society and I'm not saying that anything's perfect no way I've always been uh, uh, you know wanting to better things and try to make things more um, better as a whole so you know I, I was planning on uh, taking um, you know, counseling. I've looking. I was looking into counseling classes, and I was going to try to combine kind of a counseling service with what I'm doing it in my studio. But I, uh, when I when I went to take the cor the, the course, I, I just was really turned off. I thought that there was some um, ideology being pushed forward, and there was just things that didn't make sense to me. So as I mentioned before, I let it go, and um, it was just recently that I I came across some. Um, a woman on uh, uh, YouTube, she, uh, her name is Leslie Elliott, and uh, her um, YouTube channel is the Radical Center. And it's about, you know, not choosing a side, and it's trying to just, you know, be a classical kind of liberal type of person, or however you may want to call it. So I was able to uh, connect with her, and uh, via her, um, they, she has, um, she's part of a group called Solid Ground, and they have um, uh, uh, meetups online. And when I hurt my back, I was out for out of commission for a while. So I was able to speak with people all over America and the world, for that matter, about things that are concerning us all, like you know, ideology seeping into the schools, hospitals, uh, and this group here. They're worried about their counseling. You know, counseling 
should be, um, you know, counseling is a uh, is a business that you know ideology doesn't have a part in. Like you know, we're trying you're trying to help somebody in their personal lives. So a lot of people are concerned around the world that are in that field. And if you're interested in um, hearing about it, Leslie Elliott, uh, the Radical Center, she has great. Um, she just interviews. She's very down to earth. It's very pragmatic, logical and uh, they just have good conversations and she speaks to a lot of people in the counseling field and um, it's given me a little bit of uh, uh, security knowing that others were kind of thinking the same as me. This Japanese saw was given to me when I was in Japan by a guy. I do have a chop saw if you're wondering, but I just like doing it by hand. Yeah, so kind of the young guys that are that kind of come through me that uh, are attracted to the kind of thing I provide are guys that are just feeling a little bit displaced like with things. They're maybe having a little bit of difficulty, um, you know, just getting at, um, you know, trying to find their way. And, uh, you know, there could be some uh, mental health problems going on. And, you know, what you got to realize is that usually people like myself or anybody in kind of the counseling field or the life skills coaching or whatever it may be, oftentimes people have had to go through their own kind of tough times and uh, maybe were able to get over the hump and have learned some things along the way and that's just what makes them a little bit more of a natural uh, counselor type so that's definitely my case so you know young people that are uh, perhaps wanting to come through and uh, do some projects with me and we get some talking about life and we try to maybe get some things in place where um, you can make some improvements you know I, I am very I think I'm pretty easy to talk to and um, I will share a little bit of my story about some things even through the system or you know things I've learned along the way and uh, you know maybe you can relate and maybe it can uh, help you uh, turn a corner and uh, get on with living some some life that's full of meaning and some happiness right you don't have to be going around um, you know, I'm seeing, we're seeing so many young people in our society just really confused right now and there's um, fear being pushed on everybody, uh, whether it's climate change and, and don't get, I'm not no person that's denying any of that stuff, it's just that maybe there's a better way to, to move forward and to um, enjoy uh, and have some invigorating times in life. Um, because there's so many amazing things out there to experience, right? And um, so that's what I try to do at the old uh, Cal Lick Home Studio with my kind of mentoring uh, uh, program. And isn't this looking like a freaking awesome bat? It kind of looks more like a hockey stick, but, you know, I'll make it look kind of like a bat. We'll see. It'll be cool. I'm sure most of you guys know that song, Knocking on Heaven's Door by my man Bob Dylan. And if you guys are getting annoyed at my uh, <laughs> mentioning of Bob, uh, please don't. It's, um, it's, uh, when, 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 a, when somebody else has an artist that, that is, that, in the, that gets so deep into another and, you know, helps inspire them and, um, kind of a good thing I in my opinion I, I try to utilize the uh, um, 
Bob's inter inspiration in a good way, you know. I don't look at the the stuff that maybe might not be the best, but Bob speaks to me in many ways. Um, I got a great friend here in Vancouver. He's a drummer extraordinaire, musician extraordinaire, like really special world kind of um, music kind of guy. Studies in Ghana, African drum beats. He's really, he plays with these African bands and Indian bands and really cool stuff. Anyhow, he came over here one time to make something for his wife. I think it was Mother's Day or maybe a birthday. A little uh, planter or something like that. And he was using some tools. But he, I, I remember that time he told me the plane, he, we heard a planer in the background. He was like, the planer is the instrument that, or the tool that sounds most like music to him. So I thought that was interesting, you know, just the planer in the background. So I'm just going to plane the bottom of my bat here and try to get a flat space when it sits on the, on the, uh, and I'm only going to run that through once because I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you guys. I did it already and thought I was filming and I was doing the talk and I realized I didn't. So I just kind of wanted to get that in there. But yeah, I just planed the bottom of me bat. Um... It looks, you know, pretty good. It's going to be pretty good. And that's going to sit down. The ball will be able to uh, nestle in. And it's, look, it's just, you know, couldn't, I couldn't have hoped for a better mistake the other day, which put the ball up a little too high, which made me have to fix it. But in my opinion, it enables the trophy to it's going to be a it's going to be a better quality and better looking sculpture so which how about we uh how about i tell you guys what my plan is here for the um for the trophy i'm gonna switch the camera around i'll be back in a sec okay this is where we stand now we got the glove we got the ball. We already established the fact that since I did it freehand with a sawzall out of a block of Douglas fir, that we're not going for perfection. <laughs> and but you, you, I hope you guys kind of understand right, right now that you know I don't look for perfect. I just don't. It's just not my thing. So see how the bat sits flat on this piece of wood now, and it'll kind of go up here. Um, I gotta figure out. I don't have the right piece of wood yet that's going to be that's going to attach to the glove and the bat so i have to find that i wish i had i don't have a good piece of my studio that i like so i'm going to have to go hunting maybe today or something like that and so here's the plan this is a massive trophy and i've been thinking about this trophy for almost a year now so i got back from japan and uh, I think the president of the Little League that I'm uh, doing this for, she, I was supposed to do some work on a field, and that didn't come through, so she had mentioned this trophy. And it was too, it was too late to do it last year. The tournament was just like in a couple of weeks, and I wouldn't have had time. So she said, how about next year? And uh, I, I was like, okay. So I've been thinking about it for a long time, and when I finally got out here, um, few weeks ago to, to, to start this project I was looking I was I was thinking of the perfect idea and I just kept coming back to this big chunk of wood now and I just knew I was like is that too big yes it's too big for kids and you know you win a trophy and you want to lift it up so I've had this in mind and I realized that, you know it's probably too big for them to lift up so here's the plan the trophy gets presented I'm, I'm visualizing two adults carry it out you know, kind of like the dude carrying the Stanley Cup out. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I expect these uh, Little League parents to have white gloves on. And so after they, uh, the, ki the kids win the trophy, and another thing that I want to go back to, the other day in one of my videos I mentioned the boys in the Little League. And hey, listen, I just said that I'm well aware the girls play too. Okay, and great. Um... So when the uh, um, 
kids win it, they're able to slide. This is going to be attached. So the ball will be able to slide out. And then this handle now serves as a handle where the kids can lift this up. And I am going to do some work on this ball. So I'm going to save that explanation for the future of what I'm going to do with that when I start working on that further in the details. Same with the glove. So that's the idea of the trophy and um, slides back in right there and it, and it all just locks into place. So I think that's a kind of a cool idea and, they, and that way the kids can handle it and it's a little heavy even like that, that chunk of wood is pretty heavy but if I go back to the Stanley Cup um, everybody says it's always heavier than they think. So having a little weight to it makes it a little bit more of a real experience, I think. So that is my um, plan with the big, uh, what, are, what am I calling this? The giant baseball glove trophy. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to work on this bat. I know that my video, like these videos kind of get long and when I'm downloading or uploading, I don't know the difference. At nighttime, it's taking a long time, so I'm going to cut the video right now, work on this bat, get it smooth, and then when I kind of reconvene, hopefully it's done. I do have a friend that's supposed to come over here, and we're going to throw a ball back and forth. I have to start getting my arm in shape for my upcoming season. It is raining, but uh, this guy is a, uh, you know, he works with uh, outside on trees and stuff like that, so uh, he's not afraid of a little weather, neither am I. So hopefully we can throw the ball back and forth and um, I can get this back done. I just did a little bit of work on it. I'm going to round that in there. That's a trouble area. There was like, there's going to be some knots there. It's a little bit too thin here for my liking, but, and then I'm going to thin this out. So I've been working at it. It's, it's going to, just giving you guys a little update. Another shot around the studio. Hmm. Yeah, oh my goodness, if I just could only have four times the space and just all the tools set up and big tables set up and dust collection and all that stuff. And I don't know, maybe someday. Like I just have no space. I start piling things up and there's some paint brushes. I've done a few paintings in my over the past few years. There's one that I really like in particular. Maybe I'll show that to you guys one of these days. Yeah. All of the shelving actually in this studio comes from my wedding table, our wedding table. And uh, maybe, um, I think there's photos of it on my we on my website. I was pretty proud of it, actually. My dad helped me install it. Gavin's got your number. Okay. It is funny though. Yeah, no, should they 
Yeah, it's almost ready to start with the sandpaper. Um, when I initially saw this piece, I was gonna have it like this, but it's so much easier just to kind of let this place, let this piece be flat on, like flat on the, the base, and then just have the ball rest up. So I'm just going, I'm just working on the knob a little bit. I'm just kind of, uh, how do you see that? Should I show that? I'm just sorry for the camera movement here, folks. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just kind of working a little bit here. I just threw the ball. Um, God, my body, as I get older, I just... You know, with some injuries and stuff like that. I, I keep saying I want to just keep not doing the work. I keep saying I want to be better in next, you know, the next year and stuff. I want to be playing into my 50s and, um, you know, in a minimal role. Pitching a few innings here and there and just trying to be helpful when the team needs some emer emergency innings. I used to be the guy that pitched... You know, bigger games and stuff like that. But once my knee, um, once my knee blew up again, I haven't been able to get back to where I wanted to be. That's for sure. But felt okay just to throw the ball again, and I'll make sure I get out six or seven more times. The boys want to do a batting practice this week sometime. Hopefully uh, weather permits and we can make that happen. So much fun. There's a guy, one of my good buddies on the team, Vertholomew. He always says pr baseball practice is the best sport to practice. And I agree. Shag and flies is fun. If you're an infielder, taking ground balls is fun. And then, of course, being able to step up there and take some rips and hit. Like, what's better than that if you're a ball player? It's just awesome. Bartholomew is actually in Japan right now. And there's two other people that are important in my life that are in Japan. One, my wife Lemieux, who is Japanese, visiting her mom and doing some business and work there and meeting with friends. And guess who's touring in Japan at 80-something years of age? 82 years of age this year, next month. Uh, Bob Dylan. And he has a quite a fan base in Japan, actually. It's a really interesting thing. They A lot of people there, they get it. Like... They're, um, yeah, he, he continues to go back to Japan, and, and there's, he has quite a fan base. I just use the old X-Acto knife. Why not? I just find it easy. Cheap. Don't have a... 
That's one of the things that I should be working on more so, is learning how to sharpen good knives and getting better tools, and that'll all happen in due time, but, you know, I've always been okay with just the whole using the old X-Acto knives. I just find them sharp and easy to use. I was just taking a little break here in the rain. Um, this book here, I read it, I don't know, a few weeks ago and I renewed it because I wanted to kind of, nobody was waiting for it at the library and I wanted to go through a few more things. Um, <clears throat> now this bookmark was actually made by a friend of mine, Xander, he gave it to me. I use it all the time. Um, how to Have Impossible Conversations, a very practical guide by Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay. Uh, Peter Bogosian was a professor at um, Portland State University, I think. He had to leave his post for, you know, just pushing back and wanting to have some critical conversations. And um, the um, group that I, that I was talking about uh, earlier, Solid Ground, where, you know, a bunch of people are speaking about their um, their concerns about what's kind of the polarization and um, ideological um, happenings within our society. One of the one of the girls in our groups, uh, she had Professor Peter Bogosian for five classes at Portland State, so I thought that was cool. Um, Peter Bogosian, he's just he's all about he he tries to teach dialectic, you know. And it's a, it was a concept to me that was um, uh, that I'm learning about, you know, what a dialectic is. Rather than a debate, you're going into a conversation. You know, two people are at the, you know, you're not trying to argue or win something, which is, you know, um, I did that so many times in my past as a youngster, just with some angst in there and just, you know, thinking you know something. And um, I'm sure my uh, parents or people around me were, you know, noticing that and not thinking it was cool and you know I, I, I'm conscious of it and um, so I'm, I'm, I'm ever learning and some good points out of this book um, I was just reading through uh, reviewing um, and, you know these are some points of you know some bad habits in a conversation uh, conversational behaviors to avoid you know being discourteous or uncivil displaying anger uh, don't raise your voice and talk over someone um, don't intentionally be disrespectful. Don't ridicule and blame someone. Don't laugh at someone in an inappropriate way. Don't attack a position before understanding it. Um, you know, don't don't display an unwillingness to hear your conversation partner's arguments. Uh, don't adopt the least charitable interpretation of someone's words. Uh, don't accuse someone of being stupid if they ask a question or say they don't understand. Uh, don't punish people for making mistakes or asking for help, information, or feedback. Don't lash out at someone for speculating. Don't attack a person who holds a belief rather than the belief. You know, like example, like only a moron could believe that. Uh, don't view people as being ignorant, incompetent, negative, or disruptive. Don't be dishonest with yourself about what you believe. Uh, don't pretend to know something you don't know. I think we're all guilty. We're all, almost all guilty of all of this, right? Like, this takes a lot of work and a lot of <laughs> to practice these things. Um, don't fail to say, I don't know, if you don't know. Don't focus on the belief instead of how the belief is known. You know, that is, focus on conclusions and not epistemologies. Uh, don't suggest that a person can't really know something because of the color of their skin or other immutable attributes. Don't change your mind when presented with new and compelling evidence. Um, don't deliver messages. Don't fail to acknowledge vulnerability. Don't insist that the extremists on your side are acting rationally. Don't correct someone's grammar, it's annoying. Uh, don't call someone out for a moral transgression in a way that, in, that uh, interrupts, distracts from, or takes away from the flow or content of their message. Don't interrupt, 
Don't finish others' sentences for them. Don't bully someone into having a conversation. Don't let yourself be bullied into having a conversation. Don't look at your phone while having a discussion. Don't name drop. Don't be negative and complain. Don't brag. Don't refuse to disengage until there is a burn bridge. Now that's a lots of that's lots of don'ts. Um, you know, I got a lot out of this. Uh, I am trying to work on um, you know the concept of dialectic, and um, I think it's a an important thing to uh, to work on, and it, and it really helps to when you are having a conversation and, and, and there's disagreements and stuff. It just helps to to relax, sit back, really try to respect the other person and what they're believing and try to learn how they know something rather than what they're uh, knowing and just listen to them and uh, don't think that you're going to be changing anybody's mind in um, any uh, record amount of time or anything like that. So yeah, I, I actually got a lot out of that one and um, like I say, I kept it longer just to do a little review on it. So. I got my bat um, kind of ready to sand. There's a bit of uh, rubbish on the ground. I'm going to sweep that up and uh, get sanding that. And um, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. comes from an album called Hard Promises from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers back in the 80s. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm listening to an album, there's always one or two songs that I find myself putting on repeat. And that's one of them. And that is called Insider. And that is a duet with Tom Petty's longtime friend and sometimes collabor collaborator from Fleetwood Mac, the one and only Stevie Nicks. It's a great, I love that song. So, a couple of things. I think this bat, like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I were to take a bat that looked like this, and a ball that looked like this, I could only imagine that I would be playing a really fun game of baseball. So a couple of things. When I put the ball into this hole, I want it to kind of sink back in a little bit further. So I'm gonna carve out a little bit of this, round this out, and the ball's gonna fit in a little bit better. And now I... So this, this is the first run of the sand. I haven't put the fine sandpaper on it yet. So now I have to discover just where I want to put this and how far down I gotta shave. So if I go there, this hangs out a little bit, so I'm not the biggest fan of that. And um, so, if it's here-ish, that looks like it's about right. So I'm going to have to start by taking out some of this. Oh, I'm the one that needs to know. When Tom Petty died uh, a few years ago, that, it really hit me. Um, 
they really really impacted me and I've heard Stevie Nicks talk on the issue it impacted her and I've also last year I went to a Lucinda Williams concert here in Vancouver and she spoke about when Tom Petty died how it impacted her uh, in a you know sad way um, she wrote a song for him I can't remember the name of the song and I haven't researched it again I, th I told myself I was going to so maybe I'll do that tonight <sighs> um, okay shave that out um, it's looking not bad actually you know do I need to do that? Maybe. Maybe a little bit in here. See what happens. Curve that in a little more. Okay. I'm gonna need to know. is looking pretty cool what do you guys think eh, I think that's gonna be a special little trophy eh? That tool right there, it's probably going to require that. Quite a tool. Actually, I think I'm going to go with my little rounded chisel to begin with. That looks like a Gretzky curve right there, I would say. There's my neighbor, Caroline. Lovely woman, a mother of two. And it's her uh, brother, Neil, who lives upstairs. Lives below with her husband, and when they first moved in, I was trying to get their names right, and it was Neil that said to me, uh, "Just think of Neil Diamond, Sweet Caroline," and that's how you uh, <laughs> remember both of them, which is a great way. A donkey bridge is what they translation in German. You know, uh, using something to remember something else. They call it a donkey bridge in Germany. Actually, a German man told me that. A guy that escaped or uh, escaped through the wall, the Berlin Wall. How you doing there, Caroline? Yeah, right on. Let's 
be honest. Let's not even tell a lie here. Doesn't that sound so good, Tom and Stevie Nicks? Hey. How's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad. Thank you. That was a couple walking, carrying umbrellas, and two beautiful smiles. And I'm guessing Mexico. They just looked like they were Mexican. Um, the way they, they're in their accent and stuff like that. So I just put the ball in. I have a little bit of um, a, uh, you can kind of see right here, I'm, I'm you know, hollowing out. And the first fit, it's pretty close. It looked really good. I liked it. That was burned by fire. I mean, am I gonna, am I really gonna try, that's as good as I'm gonna want it. I'll put the sander on that, and um, we shall call that good. My God, I'm loving this sculpture. I like this, just baseball. Okay, so that was much easier than anticipated, actually. That, that was, I thought I was going to have to frig around with that a lot more, but I don't. So yes, I am pressing repeat on that song. As I turn the camera off and do a little bit of work, and then uh, Insider, check it out. Tom and Stevie. Okay, um, should I go a little tighter in there? Okay, so I gotta experiment here with this. Um, I think this is just going to be a grinder deal with the sand sander.
Well, I got things fitting pretty good to my liking. Um, yeah. So now, tomorrow I'm gonna try to find a good base piece of wood that I like. I might have to go buy a piece and um, start to get things properly sanded, some details going, um, and then I'll talk about um, my plan on the baseball stitching and past winners, etc., etc. But, you know, it's looking pretty cool, guys. It's like, um, there it is. It is massive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna film any more today. I got I think I got too much video here when it uploads. So I'm just gonna pack up. My dog has to eat soon and I'm just gonna go get cleaned up and um relax.